Hi there. In this video we are going to present an overview of the new Cam Assist 2.0 for Autodesk Fusion. We have a sample part configured in Fusion with two setups defined. In setup 1 we will be using a simple vise for work holding. And in setup 2 we have used the Cloud NC Soft Jaw Designer tool to make some soft jaws to hold our second op. We also have a solid to define the stock for setup 1. Cam Assist accepts a variety of stock bodies. For setup 2, the stock will continue from the previous setup. This will allow us to generate the toolpaths for both setups at the same time using Cam Assist. Let's launch Cam Assist. 2.0 UI opens up in a separate window. The first process that will occur is called the Assess phase. This stage is like a pre-flight check of the part for Cam Assist. If any major issues were found with the part, we will be notified. This can help save a lot of time with problematic files. In this case, we have a small feature that was added to the part to help create the soft jaws. Here is the feature in Fusion. We can dismiss issues like this if they won't impact the overall part specifications. I will relaunch Cam Assist and dismiss the issue. Minor issues can be dismissed as informative, where some others might be more serious and require action in the CAM or CAD package. I can also view dismissed issues and bring them back into view if needed. Now we are ready for the next phase called Prepare. For current CAM Assist users, Prepare should be very familiar. In this stage, we set up the necessary items in order to run the part through CAM Assist. In 2.0, we also have a 3D visualization of the part assembly which we can modify as needed. We can show or hide elements like the stock, the part, and work holding bodies. There are hidden, semi-visible, and fully visible state controls here. We can also control the display of the setups here. There are controls to show all setups or we can focus on each one individually. For the rest of the prepare controls, we have an advanced mode and a basic mode. Once you start using Cam Assist day to day, you'll probably find that you can do everything in a small number of clicks through the basic view, but the advanced views will give you more finite controls. I am going to make sure that undercuts are enabled in the advanced menu as this part has an undercut feature in setup one. I will next select the appropriate machining mode, machine, stock material, and tool library from the controls along the top. I've chosen 3 plus 2 automatic for the mode. We will go into a bit more detail on these items later in the video. Now we are ready to run Cam Assist. When I click the Run button, we move to the Analyze phase. In the previous version of Cam Assist, this stage would present a very basic progress bar, but with Analyze, we have more rich feedback and details of how the cloud calculations are progressing. Cam Assist's cloud computation is secure and does not save proprietary part or toolpath data. Cloud NC only records log files of events, none of which can be used to reverse engineer parts. This part is somewhat complex, but we can see that some of the finishing strategies have been computed. When we click on Finished, those faces will be shown in green. If there were any further machinability issues found by Cam Assist, they would be outlined in the Machinability tab as well. So far no more are showing up for this part. As this part will take a few moments to compute, we can take the opportunity to check out some other features of Cam Assist 2.0. The UI can be shown in a light mode or a dark mode according to your preference. This control affects the whole Cam Assist experience. Give it a try. We've also updated the Help Center with brand new content and the Cloud NC Academy is adding new materials all the time. While this part continues to compute, let's have a look at some of the configuration settings in Cam Assist. With 2.0, we have brought these functions into Cam Assist. This provides the benefit of cloud database management for commonly used items. In the machine shop context, with Cam Assist, different Cam programmers in the same company can use the same machine, material, and tool data and manage the data in a centralized way. This means more standardized and consistent output. 
Here we can see how machines can be added to Cam Assist. With the machine kinematic set up, Cam Assist can generate clear and appropriate toolpath strategies. The favorites controls in the My Shop configuration views control what is shown in the prepare screen so you can efficiently manage your experience. For My Materials, the database comes pre-populated with a number of commonly used metals, and these are associated with Cam Assist's cutting parameter engine but you can add any material you need. Materials can be grouped and filtered by ISO category for simple selection. Again, although there are many materials in the database, only those marked as favorites will appear in the prepare stage. Let's take a quick look at tool libraries now. When Cam Assist runs, it examines how different tools may work to machine a part. For this, we need to provide a set of tools or tool libraries for it to use. Each tool library contains a set of tool assemblies. We've included some demonstration libraries as examples, but once you are fully on board with Cam Assist, you will have your own tools here. Each tool assembly has the data for specific machining conditions like the stock material and intended use. This default library cannot be edited, so we will look at a different one to show the editing functionality. In this tool library, which is a duplicate of the previous one, we will look at a tool assembly. When we click edit, we can see the full details of the tool assembly. In the assembly properties, it is simple to edit the stick out, for example, which might be a quick fix to access a pocket that is deeper than the current conditions allow for. In tool properties, the definition of the cutting tool can be viewed or modified as needed. The same applies to holder properties. You might be thinking at this point this seems like a lot of work to get set up, but Cam Assist has an answer for that. We'll preview that shortly in the video. The last configuration view for tool assemblies is the presets. In Cam Assist, feeds and speeds can come from two sources, either Cam Assist, AI-generated feeds and speeds, or user-defined values. If you want to use the user-defined method, you will need to establish presets. Presets are specific to the stock material and the tool usage. For example, here we will define a preset for adaptive roughing in aluminum. We could enter the values manually, or we can get some help from Cam Assist's Cutting Parameters Explorer. Here I will see the Cutting Parameters Explorer recommendations based on all of the data in the preset. I will tweak this a bit and then hit Save Preset. Now my preset is populated. Let's check on how our part computation is proceeding. It looks like it will take a bit more time before the program view is accessible. As expected, the construction feature with no fill lets has been flagged as unfinished. While we wait, let's go back to the configuration to see how easy it is to add tools into Cam Assist. We can add tool libraries from scratch and begin populating them manually if we like. Or, we can use the import shop config tool to do a lot of the heavy lifting for us. This tool allows you to generate tool libraries from existing tool management files and CAM files from the CAM package. We will give our new tool library a name and then choose some appropriate files. Cam Assist will process the files and then once we add the material for the preset, we will be able to view the prepared tool library. How simple was that? 
There may be a bit of cleanup required to align the tools with Cam Assist, but this is straightforward from here, plus Cam Assist provides the feedback we need to make the necessary corrections. Let's hop back to analyze and check the part. Cam Assist has now completed the computation of the toolpath strategies. We can examine these strategies in the Program tab. Program view gives us a breakdown of the operations generated by Cam Assist. As we can see, each finished face on the part is colored corresponding to the operation. We can navigate in the program view to explore the computed operations more closely. Each level can be expanded or collapsed, and as we select grouping or individual operations, the 3D view updates accordingly. Roughing operations are represented by volumes, and finishing operations are represented by faces. For specific toolpaths to be visualized, we will have to generate the operations in Fusion, but this provides a helpful breakdown of the operations. Let's click through some of these operations. Although some of these roughing operations might look like they will collide with the work holding, don't be alarmed. In Fusion, the actual toolpath will not produce collisions. The representation in Cam Assist is at a higher level of abstraction. We can click on the group to see all of the operations together, such as when I click on the first flat row or I can check each operation individually. Some hole making operations and deburring operations do not have a corresponding 3D visualization at the time this video was posted. We will speed up the video a bit here as we go through each operation's examination. Prior to sending operations back to Fusion, we can choose which operations to send with the enabled switches. We can turn off whole setups or groups or individual operations. Operations that are not enabled will not be sent to Fusion. For each operation, we can also adjust the applied feeds and speeds if we like by using the Cutting Parameters Explorer. Cam Assist Cutting Parameters Explorer provides recommendations that can then be modified and then applied to each operation if necessary. Cutting Parameters Explorer is a dynamic, physics-based AI model that is used to produce appropriate machining parameters back to the Cam package. Depending on the tool type and operations edited, different specific controls will be visible in the Cutting Parameters Explorer. Once we are satisfied with everything in Cam Assist, we need to hit the Send to Cam Package button to send the results back into Fusion. We will speed things up through the transfer and generation phases in Fusion for the video. After the toolpaths have been generated in Fusion, it is reasonable to expect a bit of tidy up on the Cam Assist results. In this case, there were a few empty deburring toolpaths and a few wall operations had improper retract heights, but these were simple fixes. Let's check out some of the results and the simulation. Cam Assist 2.0 is available now for Autodesk Fusion, as well as Mastercam 2025 and 2026. Cloud NC has other integrations coming online over the next few weeks and months, so stay tuned for more information. Contact your reseller or Cloud NC directly if you would like more information. Thanks for watching this introduction to Cam Assist 2.0. We will be breaking down the functionality in more videos, so make sure you subscribe to the CloudNC channel to stay updated. See you next time!